Welcome to FaceTime Fly Fishing. I am your host, Eric Strout. Glad you could be a part of the program today. It is November 19th, going into Thanksgiving already this year. Uh, this weekend is a big weekend in the fly fishing world. The International Fly Tying Symposium in Somerset, New Jersey is going on. Uh, of which I was not going to attend or I am not going to attend because I had a steelhead trip planned with Vince Tobia and Canaraugus Creek Outfitters. And uh, unfortunately, they got whacked with about five feet of snow and we had, to, <coughs> we had to push the trip back. So luckily for us, uh, Vince was able to fit us in later in the month of December. And uh, so stay posted. I am going to get up there and shoot some video. Uh, all of our guys can make it on the trip with the exception of one, and we're going to work on him a little bit. So Les, if you're listening, um, our company is a full service company, and we can write letters for you. We can make phone calls. We can do all sorts of things to make that trip happen for you. <laughs> So uh, be a part of the show today. If you're at work, try to look busy for the next 40 minutes. We've got some great things to discuss today. I'm going to give you my top 20 flies to catch trout pretty much anywhere in the world. And I, I would maintain that if you have these 20 patterns, um, you're going to be in the game wherever you go, whenever you're there. So um, stay posted for that. Latest videos, um, and before I get going, like I said, be a part of the show today. You can use the Google Plus question answer toggle. Um, you can also text me at 814-505-4568. Um, feel free, if you've got a question or a comment, um, feel free to uh, let us know what you're thinking. and. Feel free to comment on the latest videos. We've had uh, three videos come out uh, as part of the 30 Days series on the site since our last uh, live show, uh, episode 12, 13, and 14, and uh, had a variety of different fishing conditions and different waters all on the same river. But um, episode 12, uh, if, if, if you're not a FaceTime member, you don't know what we're talking about, and I'll get to that in a moment. Episode 12 had some brutally tough fishing. Uh, I think it was the only day, no, it's the second day in the series that I didn't catch a fish. And uh, it was only out for a brief time, but it was enough that uh, I, I felt like I should have caught one. But uh, you have to check it out. It was windy. It was cold. Uh, the fishing got really tough, and it just so happened to be um, a very important day to me. It was my my father's um, birthday, or would have been his birthday, and uh, it was a kind of a nice evening, uh, regardless of the fishing conditions. Uh, episode thirteen, I sort of made up for that day. I was on the lower river, got some very nice fish. Um, Went out and just had one of those days where I whacked them. And 14, episode 14 just came out today, this morning. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, it turned out really nice. I fished a piece of water that I hadn't fished since I was a young boy. And this water is right below uh, on the river where my great-grandfather lived. And he was sort of my introduction to the outdoors. And uh, he used to take me here when he was babysitting me, and I would just mull around and do whatever five- and six-year-old kids do. And eventually, when I got old enough to fish, uh, I spent quite a bit of time on this water. But it was really neat to go back there. I don't know why I haven't fished it for so long. Uh, I was trying to remember after I filmed it um, the last time that I was there. And I'm not sure that I've been there uh, at least for 20 years. So it's just it just happens to be in a place that's a little remote. It takes a little time to get to. It's not remote, actually. It just takes time to get into. And um, there are better places on the river most of the year. This time of year, uh, it just, just happens to be uh, 
uh, a good time to be there and i hit it right and we got some nice fish and uh, so check it out see what you think send me your comments on it uh if you're if you're not a facetime member go to www.ericstroutflyfishing.com uh, you can join the site it's 10 bucks a month you can join for three months six months or 12 months you can see all of these videos that uh, I've referenced quite a bit on the uh, on this program. So uh, there are lots of videos on the site that you don't have to be a member to watch. But if you want to see the really, really good stuff, uh, you've got to be a member. So join the site. If you have any questions, give me a call, 814-505-4568. Also, don't be afraid to send an email. You can email me uh, at epstroup at gmail.com. That's E-P-S-T-R-O-U-P at gmail.com. We've got a question here. Uh, Eric, you didn't answer the question about where you tie the additional three feet of butt between the first and section, first section of fly line or between the first and second section. Um, good question, Joe. And by the way, Joe, your, your vices are en route. Um, the fly... This is a topic, uh, for those who didn't hear the show last week, we talked about this, um, using a long butt on a leader, on a nymphing leader, to prevent weight coming out of the, the uh, last tip top of the rod. The butt section that I talk about that's extended is right off of the fly line to the beginning part of the leader. So I tie a normal Harvey leader, and I just simply add uh, three feet of 25-pound maxima to that that's the extension and it's just from the fly line to the leader so hopefully that answers your question joe uh before we get going i want to do a quick ad um anyone who has been following uh us i say us my wife and i on youtube and our our other channel as you know i put a uh show that tracy and i do on this site a couple of weeks ago some guys were a little upset about that because it wasn't directly fishing related but um i just want to share something with you real quick before we get going on our topic uh which is going to be packed with information by the way today um hopefully most of it is good <laughs> but um i want to talk real quick about something that i'm very involved with with tracy and it's uh, doTERRA essential oils. And what, I, what we're going to do is for FaceTime members, I talk a lot about this lifelong vitality pack. This stuff has really changed uh, how I feel. Uh, I can't tell you, everybody that knows that I, I played a lot of football in my years. I've got lots of injuries. I don't sleep. Um, this stuff has literally changed my life. And to uh, introduce this to you, if you call Tracy at 814-932-5716 or send her an email at trainedbytracy at gmail.com, talk to her about the Lifelong Vitality Pack. She will get you set up. I promise you, this will make you feel better than what you feel right now. It is packed full of nutrients. It's a monthly program. It is unbelievable. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. And as a promotion, uh, what Tracy and I are doing, Tracy makes a blend of essential oils that I use every day. Uh, and it, it's funny, it's called the man blend, but it's a, a blend of several oils that really just calms you down and keeps you focused. And uh, I can feel when it's coming out of my system. And I just put a little on my temples and I'm good to go. Um, she, This is a $20 value. She's going to give this away for anybody who orders this pack and if you have any questions about it call her and talk to her about it she will tell you all about it it's the lifelong vitality pack from doTERRA i will tell you i swear on my life this stuff is fantastic it is really really good and uh, if you don't want the man blend if you're a female watching the show there is also a women's blend and there is peaceful child so coming up around the holidays we've got lots of stress um, got to stay focused, you eat a little more, you drink a little more, you don't sleep quite as well. These blends really help you. And these nutrients, these vitamins 
will uh, really change the way you feel. So give it a give it a shout out and uh, look into it. No pressure, but try it. it. That's all I can tell you is just try it. With that, uh, let's see. What landmark delineates the separation between the upper and lower river? Spruce Creek. Uh, the upper river, Mike, is uh, anything above where Spruce Creek flows into the Little Juniata. Uh, the lower river is below that, obviously. Um, is there much good water below Bear Ree? Is there access? Yes, there's tons of good water. In fact, uh, below Bear Ree, if you look at episode 13, that's where that's shot. So uh, check it out. It's uh, But the, the delineation between the upper and lower river, I talk about those a lot in the videos. I should have uh, made that a little more uh, apparent. But the, the delineation is Spruce Creek. It's where Spruce Creek flows into the river. And that is right at the village of Spruce Creek. With that, uh, we're going to get into our topic. 20 flies that as trout fishermen, we need. And if we have these 20 flies, these 20 patterns, we will be in the game anywhere we go, anytime we're there. Now, I'm sure that there are lots of people that could add some things to this. And like I said in the, uh, the little promo prior to the show, anything else you have is going to be icing on the cake. And it's going to improve your arsenal. But these patterns are essential for trout fishermen. And, uh, you know, I put these together, excuse me, this morning. And I was thinking about it yesterday. Special thanks, by the way, to Anthony Marino, who gave me this topic idea yesterday. I was actually going to do the show on something completely different. And uh, Anthony sent me an email with this question. And I thought, boy, that's a great topic. So thank you, Anthony. Um, I think this is a super topic, and uh, I will be very interested to hear your responses. And what I would like to hear from you is your five essential patterns that you're never without. And I want to report that on this broadcast uh, maybe in a, a couple of weeks after I compile a lot of information. I would like to hear from you, anyone who's listening to the show, send me an email um, titled Five Patterns. And uh, give me your top five fly fishing patterns that uh, that you're never without for trout. And I don't want any streamers because there's there's so many streamers, and it's to me that is that is a different type of fishing. Um, I want I want drifting flies, uh, things that we get caught in situations where we have to imitate something. You don't necessarily have to do that with streamers. Uh, streamers can be used as, as basically an aggression type uh, attractor. And uh, so I'm not interested in streamer patterns. I want your top five flies that uh, you just don't want to be without on a river. So getting into that, please don't hesitate to uh, send your comments in. Number one pattern. Uh, if I had to pick one fly that I would just never want to be without, it would be the woolly bugger. And because it is so versatile, you can do so many things with it. Um, you can dead drift it, which is how I fish them mostly. I don't consider the woolly bugger really a streamer. It certainly can be fished like a streamer. But I so often use it as an attractor pattern um, within a nymph rig with maybe a slight amount of movement but it imitates so many things. It imitates leeches, it imitates drake nymphs, it imitates um, struggling fish. I mean, there are so many things. What it really does is it, it causes, uh, or it brings attention to the rig. So I would say number one pattern is a woolly bugger. And I would typically tie that in, any, in sizes ranging from a one-aught down to a size 14. I really like small buggers um, and beaded and non-beaded, of course. But uh, black, brown, olive, ginger, and gray. Uh, those would be my my main colors 
Uh, of course, you can do chartreuse. You can do uh, all sorts of things. But um, those five colors are really the basics. Uh, ginger, I have found to be really, really effective. Um, so that's number one. Number two is a pattern that I've tied on the site. Uh, if you're a FaceTime member, you've seen this. The Waltz Worm, uh, developed by a friend of mine, Walt Young, back in the 70s uh, here in central Pennsylvania. It is nothing more than Hair's Ear Plus, number one, tied on a, on a hook over lead. It is extremely effective. It imitates, uh, it was designed to imitate a crane fly larva, but it imitates all sorts of things. It'll imitate sh uh, shrimp, crest bugs, uh, caddis larva, uh, tie it in a variety of sizes. I don't typically tie a bead on this because I, this is tied on about 20 wraps of lead. But um, I tie them in sizes ranging from 10 to 16. I don't tie them any smaller than that typically. I would use a different pattern for something that was going to be smaller than that. I tie very few in the 16 range. I most often fish this fly and a 14 and 12. So uh, keep that in mind. And I have used this pattern out west. I've used it here. Um, I've never not had success with the Waltz Worm. It is a great fly. Pheasant tails. Obviously, you can't have any discussion about uh, fly patterns without the pheasant tail. And there are many, many variations of this. Um, you've got uh, hot spots on the pheasant tails or, or, or triggers, um, flashbacks, all sorts of things. I'm going to use pheasant tail as a, as a basis um, for many, many different uh, variations of it. So pheasant tail, beaded and non-beaded. And I typically want to have that fly in anywhere from size 20 down to 14. I know guys that tie them on, on size 22, 24 hooks. I don't think that's necessary. I would use a different pattern if I had to fish something that small. But anywhere from 20 to um, 14, you could certainly go 12, but I don't think it's necessary. I'd use something different. Um, this The pheasant tail is a great mayfly imitation. It will imitate um, so many mayflies that are in the system uh, very, very well, including the sulfur nymph. So I have actually excluded the sulfur nymph off this list, uh, which I'm going to talk about some of the flies that I don't have on this list. But you can fish a pheasant tail for a sulfur. And, that, you know, you can tie it in, in a variety of ways. You can tie it with different color thoraxes. Um, but the basic pattern is the pheasant tail, and you certainly can't be without that. I would say sizes 20 to uh, as large as 14. Next is another one that everybody knows, uh, and we'll just get it out of the way quickly, the hare's ear. Now, beaded and non-beaded, um, you could tie it from different parts of the mask to make it different colors. I tie the hare's ears in anywhere from sizes 18 all the way up to 10. Uh, you could probably go larger than that. But <clears throat> again, you can you can add some things to this. You can put a hot spot or a trigger on it. You can use um, flashback material to make it uh, high vis in some way. The hare's ear imitates not only mayfly nymphs, but it'll imitate stonefly nymphs as well. It will also imitate emerging nymphs that are going through like an instar. Um, so very, very versatile pattern. If you had nothing but hare's ears, pheasant tails, and waltz worms to fish for an entire year, you would probably catch as many fish as your friends. <laughs> so uh, the other thing that I do with pheasant tails, or that I, or excuse me, with uh, hare's ears, something I used to do a lot before I came across this new pattern that I'm going to talk about, is uh, I would grease them and fish them right in the film. So um, Really, really useful pattern. You don't want to be without it. So that's uh, hare's ears, beaded, non-beaded, sizes 18 up to 10. And I do like to tie the hare's ears larger than the pheasant tails because they imitate some of the drake nymphs very well. Uh, they have lots of, of uh, 
spiky material coming off of them that look like gills and things like that. So great, great uh, drake nymph imitation. Caddis larvas, very, very simple patterns. Nothing more than dubbing on a hook um, of your choice of color uh, up to the thorax, which you can use a darker dubbing or you can use peacock hurl, but very, very basic caddis larva that even the most novice fly tires can tie. No reason not to have a variety of these in different colors. And for the caddis larvas, I put beads on them. I have ones that, that are not beaded, um, sizes 18 to 12 in a multitude of colors. Uh, olive, brown, tan, cream, uh, you pick it. I would say those four uh, and green, those five colors, green, olive, tan, cream, and brown, those will cover every caddis larva in North America for the most part. You may have a, a stray here and there, but you're going to be in the food chain in any river in the country fishing those patterns. Can't go wrong. Uh, like I said, sizes 18 to 12. I like to tie them on a curved hook. Um, just can't go wrong with it. When you get smaller than that, we, we then start to call those midge larvas. Same type of pattern. Um, I use very little dubbing, if any at all. I'll use a thread body with some wire, but very, very small patterns, same look, looking patterns, beaded and non-beaded. Midge larvas are, uh, we call them zebra midges, but that's what I consider a midge larva. I don't get too complicated with them. I tie them sizes 22 to 16. And most often I have a bead on these. Um, probably more than I have non-beaded, but they are very, very simple patterns. Nothing more than thread and wire. Um, very, very effective patterns. And I would tie those in a variety of colors, black, white, olive, and brown. Uh, those will imitate any midge in any system. <coughs> and quite honestly, those four colors um, are always prevalent in just about any water. Uh, in North America. So you can't go wrong with those. You will very rarely see, um, both with the caddis larva and the midge larva, you will very rarely see uh, a situation where the trout are really keyed in on one specific color of those and they won't eat anything else. If they're eating one of those uh, items, either caddis larvas or midge larvas. If they're eating them, most often they'll eat a variety of different things. It's very rare to see them be really keyed in on that. Um, it does happen though. So it's good to have those variety of colors, but usually when the fish are on those, those food items, they're, they're feeding selectively. They're taking that because it's most prevalent. Um, they're not really keyed in on them like they can be on, say, a sulfur nymph. So they will eat. If they're feeding on those, they're eating, and you should be able to catch them on, on a variety of, of bugs. I've got one new pattern, one new age pattern that I've put into this list, and it is Kevin Compton's Cinnamon Toast. This pattern, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, I don't know how Kevin came up with it, but I can tell you that it is extremely effective. Uh, the color is just right. Uh, and it, it, that may be a regional thing for me. I know that Kevin's brother guides in Colorado and it is his go-to fly. So it's, it's regional here and it's regional in Colorado, but this pattern, if you're not familiar with it, go on to the site at FaceTime Fly Fishing at, at uh, www.ericstroutflyfishing.com. Go check it out. It is an unbelievable pattern, and uh, it's the only uh, quote-unquote new pattern that I have in this list. Um, will not be without that fly ever. <laughs> Now, we're going to get into a couple of transition patterns here. 
pheasant tail soft tackle. Oh, and before I move on, the cinnamon toast, I would fish that or have that in sizes 16 up to 12. And that is on a European hook that, that Kevin ties. So the 12 is not really a 12 by our standards. It's a little smaller than that. But uh, great pattern. You don't want to be without it. Pheasant tail soft tackle. This is one of my favorite patterns. It is a great searching pattern. It's also very good anytime that you've got mayflies around. Um, it imitates a lot of emerging mayflies. It also imitates a lot of uh, drowned adults. It is a great, great pattern. It's just fishy. Um, and I tie that in sizes 14 all the way up to 10. I fish my soft tackles large because you can. You can get away with that. Um, you can do lots of neat little things with this pattern. You can put a bright thorax on it. You can put a trigger of some sort. Um, it's effective. It's just a good fishy fly. It's been around for a long time. Don't want to be without it. Uh, when nothing else is working, a lot of times, and, and it's, it's a flaw of mine, but when I'm experiencing trouble, I'm not catching fish when I think I should be. I then think about soft tackles and uh, the pheasant tail and the next fly in my list, the hare's ear soft tackle. Um, they, they too often come too late in my thought process, but I can tell you both of these patterns are extremely effective. You don't want to be without them. Uh, if you have hatching activity, both of them are, are extremely effective. I will fish them deep. I will also fish them greased. I'll fish them right in the film. Uh, I will swing them. There's lots of things you can do. You can even move them. You can move them sort of like a streamer pattern. The hair's ear, I typically will tie a little bigger. I'll tie it from like a size 14 all the way up to an 8. Uh, and it's a great imitation of drake, uh, drake patterns, drake nymphs, uh, isonychias, all sorts of things. So that really covers your transitional patterns. Both of those flies, the pheasant tail and the hare's ear soft tackle, really cover your transitional patterns. Uh, when the trout are keyed in on something that's that's moving or it's rising up in the film or it's being drowned in the film, um, these two patterns really, really cover that. Two attractor patterns left uh, that I would not want to be without. And Tom, yes, the Frenchie would be included in the pheasant tails. That would be a variety of the pheasant tails. Um, two attractor patterns that I would not want to be without. One is the green weenie. And I have to say, uh, this entire season, the only green weenies I've had in my box are, are ones that I've picked out of trees <laughs> or I took off of a... Uh, a client's rig and replaced it with something else and just happened to stick it in my box. Um, I hardly ever focus on them. And it's, it's really funny. Uh, you'll have a dozen days a year where if you don't have a green weenie on your rig, you're not catching a fish and they won't necessarily eat the green weenie, but it'll bring attention and they'll eat something else. It is an extremely valuable pattern. Uh, and it's because I've talked about it before. It's because everything that's in a river system that is chartreuse is food. Uh, I think of the Rikophilia caddis, uh, the rockworm. That that is a depending on where it's at in the system and what it's eaten recently, uh, it can be a really bright green. So chartreuse, you know, there's a there's a saying in the bass world. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. It's true with fly fishing too. Uh, I wrote a story in, in uh, Common Sense Fly Fishing about a really tough trout that was feeding on something. We couldn't figure it out. I had a really good angler I was guiding. Had a really good angler. I had two really good anglers that took shots at this fish. And uh, we watched this fish feed uh, for almost an hour and could not get him to take anything that we threw to him. Ended up, uh, before we quit on him, put a green weenie on, the guy made the worst cast of the day, 
wasn't even close to the fish. The fish moved about six feet and took the fly. So green weenie, it's one of those things that you just want to have in your box. Um, certain times of year when the water's up, springtime, fall, great, great pattern to have. You don't want to be without it. It's so easy to tie that there's no reason not to have a few of them. And I put beads on all of mine for the most part. So uh, beaded green weenie. The last pattern uh, underneath that I'm going to say that you should have with you all the time, if you're into just catching fish, is an egg pattern. And I can't tell you how many times um, I have fished a run that I knew there were trout in that I could not get them to eat. Didn't matter what time of year it was. Uh, and I learned this from Joe Humphreys. Uh, if Joe had that situation and he couldn't, couldn't catch them and he knew they were there, he'd put an egg on and make one cast and boom, he'd catch a trout. And I sort of adopted that because it was just, uh, it just verified to me that there's a fish there and it's in the DNA of trout to eat eggs. And uh, whether you like the, the thought of throwing an egg pattern to a trout or not, uh, if you want to catch a fish, Egg patterns are hard to beat. And what I like to, to use for egg patterns is the blood dot uh, designed by Jeff Blood from Pittsburgh. It is a great pattern. I tie them uh, in sizes uh, all the way from 10 down to 16. And there are certain times a year in the spring when the suckers are spawning, an egg pattern is priceless. So um, I love to have a few of them with me at all times, never want to be without them. And I can tell you that I've had days when I was guiding on the Madison River in Montana in July and could not catch a trout. I had a guy that uh, one day that really couldn't get the fly more than 20 feet from the boat. It was windy. It was just one of those days where you knew nothing was going right. And uh, eventually, after about the first two hours and we hadn't touched a fish, I thought the hell with it, I'm gonna put a couple of eggs on. And I put two big eggs on, and I said, just toss it out there, put a big thingamabobber on it. And we ended up catching about 20 fish uh, in July in Montana. So um, never be afraid to throw one <laughs> if you wanna catch a trout. Uh, it, they're just designed to eat eggs, and uh, that's a pattern that I would not be without. So that gets us uh, to number 11. We've got uh, nine left. Going to take a slight break here and put a word in for my buddy, Kevin Compton at Performance Flies. Go to www.performanceflies.com. Uh, FaceTime members get free shipping on all orders. And if you're a new FaceTime member and you haven't ordered from Kevin yet, go to info at performanceflies.com let him know you're a member and he will give you a code so that you can uh make a purchase online and you're not charged shipping so i've got tons of uh response here how about mex blueberry and the pittsburgh steeler eggs i gotta tell you i had a i have a great story with mex blueberry I was fishing uh, with a lady named Casey, who is a very serious angler and a very serious fly tire. We were fishing the sulfur hatch, and we had a tremendous fish rising out in front of us, and we, th we were throwing uh, a sulfur with a sulfur nymph hanging off of it. I think we even tried a soft tackle sulfur. and. Um, could not get this fish to take. And Charlie had just written an article about the blueberry. And she said, just for the heck of it, Eric, she said, I want to try a Patriot with a blueberry on this trout. And I sort of rolled my eyes and I thought, okay, I really didn't think, uh, now I'm not poo-pooing the pattern, but this was May. This was uh, the third week of May in the middle of the sulfurs. And um, 
she put a patriot on and this blueberry and the first drift this trout ate the blueberry it was a 19 inch brown uh, that was eating sulfur nymphs, I'm sure, but it could not resist the blueberry. So I would never poo-poo the blueberry. Uh, the steeler egg, I've had some success on. When Charlie came up with that pattern, I was actually the one that named it. But when Charlie came up with that pattern, that was uh, that was based on a scientific report from uh, the state of Washington that found that the combination of color between black and yellow was a real trigger to trout. Or, or to uh, salmon or steelhead. And um, so it was, uh, there's some there's some science behind that pattern, but um, <clears throat> it does work. But if I had to pick one egg, uh, it would be the blood dot that I tied on the site. Uh, and you'll see why. If you look at that video on the site, you will see why that pattern is so effective. It's translucent. And the sparser you make it, the better it is. Uh, the other advantage to that pattern is when a trout picks it up and it realizes it's not real, it can't get rid of it. That stuff gets stuck in their teeth and uh, you get a good hook set <laughs> every time. So I can't believe it, but we're, uh, we're just about out of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save number 12 through 20 for next week's show. And uh, we will get into that. This also gives me an opportunity. I don't know how many texts I got here, but uh, I got quite a few texts with everybody's favorite flies. And uh, I can't wait to report on that. Do you like nymph or scud hooks on the smaller sizes? Tom, I like the widest gap I can get. And so most often that is a scud hook. Um, I love the European hooks, the uh, Hanak hooks that Kevin Compton sells at Performance Flies are priceless. They've got a great bend. Uh, they're beaked a little bit. You get great penetration with those hooks. And uh, if I can stay away, I've, I've talked about this quite a bit on the show before. If I can tie a smaller fly on a larger hook, I will. Uh, it, there's tremendous benefit to that. Uh, you don't miss or lose as many fish. And... Um, you know, I, I'm, I've always been a believer in the, the, the bigger gap that you can get with a hook, the better off you're going to be. So just about going to wrap us up. Thanks so much. We had a good audience today uh, live. Most of the viewers watch this show through the week. So if you're watching live and it's your first show, this show is archived on my site at www dot ericstroutflyfishing.com every show that we do is archived there so you can go back and you can look all the way from november of last year we've just turned a year old so we've got uh close to 50 shows like this i think we had a couple of weeks off uh in the past year but not many so there's close to 50 shows with uh lots of information some shows were better than others i'll freely admit and one more time if you want to feel better if you want to feel better physically, if you want to sleep better, if you want to deal with stress better, especially over the holidays coming up, give us a call. Call Tracy, 814-932-5716. Talk to her about the Lifelong Vitality Pack from doTERRA. You will not regret it. In three days, you will feel like a different person, I can promise you. And I tell you, you can't eat enough nutrition to replace what this does for you. It will make you feel 10 times better. And if you do it today, uh, FaceTime members get an essential oil to try out for themselves, either the man blend, the woman's blend, or peaceful child if you have a crazy kid. So give us a call. Get out there and go fishing. The fishing is still good, even with this cold snap that we've had. Um, Without going steelheading this weekend, I'm going to try to hit the local trout streams, and I'm guiding Monday and Tuesday, so it's going to be good. So I can't wait. Get out, do some fishing, and come back next week, same time, same place. We will go over number 12 through number 20. And until then, good fishing. <laughs>